Hey everybody, it's Chili here, coming back at you with another episode of the Hug Series. This is episode 9, and we are going to implement a direct input system. We are going to add controller support to our game. Now you might be asking yourself, Chili, why are we doing direct input? Isn't that your grandpa's API? Ain't it all about X input now? Well... I mean, technically, X-Input is the newest iteration for Microsoft GamePad support. And um, <clears throat> it's probably the one that they're pushing. But I decided to go with direct input, and that's for one reason. One main reason. The reason is, is that X-Input will allow you to use any controller as long as it's an Xbox 360 controller, which is kind of shitty. I mean, I use a PlayStation 3 controller with some kind of shady drivers in order to play games. And I like to be able to access all of the different buttons on there, not just the ones that happen to be on an Xbox 360 controller, right? I don't think X input supports a number of buttons that's greater than the number on an Xbox 360 controller, which isn't that many buttons or axes. So, I decided to say, hey, Microsoft, you want to force me to do some bullshit? Well, fuck you. I'm going to go with your old ass API, which is also fucking bullshit. To, I don't know. The, the documentation is not the greatest. Let me just say that. I don't know what it's like on X input, so I can't compare, but it's pretty fucking messed up on uh, direct input. So, without further ado, let us jump right into the code. Again, we're going to synchronize with GitHub. We're going to drink some water. <clears throat> Get that uh, phlegm all settled up in the, th in the throatal area. And we're receiving the objects. Thank you very much, GitHub. All right, let's go to branches. And let's add a new branch, and we are looking for origin D input. There it is. Let's create that. <clears throat> know that. All right, so uh, I think I did this all in one giant commit, so we're not even going to look at the uh, changes. Let me look at this here for a second. View history. Yeah, there's only there's one giant commit, and there's a couple small ones just for some bullshit I added later on. Much later on, as you can see, like four months later. But anyways, <clears throat> so D input, mainly what we did here was we added the D input class. I didn't actually integrate it into the, uh, into the engine in this update. All are in this branch. All I did was create it. I think I tested it, but then I removed the testing code. Which is kind of dumb, but anyways. So what do we do? How do I explain all this garbage? Well, <clears throat> I think first things first, there's some bullshit, but we're just going to go over the basics of the flow of using direct input. And then later, after that, I'll talk about some of the bullshit that I encountered. Uh, so where is direct input in my in my files here? I think it's under, no, it's under, it's under framework. D input. Here we go. This has better syntax highlighting than the uh, the display in the sh the track changes history thing. So we're gonna use this now. <clears throat> God damn throat. All right. So the first thing is pretty. I don't know. It's pretty common among a lot of different Microsoft APIs, or probably just APIs in general. You're going to call the uh, the function that basically sets up the whole system, initialize the uh, system. And in this case, that's direct input create. You call that, you get a handle to a direct input, which is just a pointer to I direct input 8 W. I have no idea what the W stands for. It doesn't matter. We don't care. We're going to use that to enumerate the devices. This is different than other DirectX stuff you might have used up until now, like Direct3D, in the framework, at least, because when you go working with Direct3D, you've really only got one device, right? You've, 
you've got one primary adapter when you're playing game. Unless you're doing bullshit with like multiple monitors, now nah, you just got one. You don't enumerate, you just chew, you just tell it, give me the default one, that's good enough for me. But with game pads, you probably want to enumerate that one. You can't assume there's going to be one. There might be zero game pads attached. In fact, that's probably a very common use case. Uh, or there might be multiple game pads attached and you want to use all of them or just a specific one from among them. So what you want to do is you want to enumerate devices. Calling the enum devices function will, uh, uh, what does it do? How does it work? You, you supply it with a callback, which is another function that you implement. And when you call enum devices, it will call your callback for each device that it finds. And when it calls that, it gives you an instance of the device, which is just a bunch of information about that device. And it gives you a context, which is a thing that you specify in your original enum devices call. So in this case, the context is going to be a pointer to my direct input class, which is a wrapper around uh, I direct input. And in the callback, what it's well, what it should do is it should uh, basically create a device for every uh, time the callback is called. But for my purposes, I only get the first device. We can fix this later on, but for now, I only I'm only interested in one gamepad. The game doesn't support multiplayer, so I don't give a shit. So what I do is, well, I just cast my context here to make it easier to use later on down here and then I uh, what do I do here I've got a unique pointer to a gamepad object which is a wrapper around a direct input device and I create a new gamepad based on the information that was passed to the callback so I guess the main thing that you need to create the device is the uh, GUID instance, which is the identifier of the device. So using that, I create a device. And when I return direct input enumeration stop, I'm telling it no more, don't, don't call my callback anymore, I'm done. I have enumerated all that I want to. And that's that. Mm. And that's basically all there is to the direct input wrapper class. You got your destructor here, it just releases direct input and bullshit. So, the next thing, and the thing where you know most of the meat is, is in the device itself. Which is class gamepad. Because that's really the only kind of device I'm interested in for using direct input. Uh, so what do we do to create a device in direct input? What's the important steps as far as the API goes? Well, you call create device and obviously you pass it the GUID like I said before and you pass it a pointer to a pointer which it fills with the uh, handle to the device and you pass it no pointer. I don't know what this is for. It could be. It's on. Uh, I have no idea. It's not important. Probably never use it. I know I never use it. If you really want to know, you can look it up on the goddamn, I mean, direct input create device. Let's see what we got here. Direct input 8 create device method. Waiting for Microsoft.com to get off its goddamn ass. What do we got here? Uh, address to the controlling objects, I unknown interface for com aggregation. This, I, I have heard of com aggregation. It's like when you want to build your own com objects, you want to put a bunch of them together in one sack, I think. But I don't know because I've never done it and you're probably never going to do it either. So just never use it. There you go. Question answered. No pointer will be fine. All right. Now, the next thing you got to do is you got to set a data format for that device. And this is the format that it will use to, um, to basically tell or inform you of its state. 
So how a data format works is you can specify what objects on the device you're interested in receiving information about. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, if you've got a gamepad, here's your gamepad. Oh, look at that beautiful art. You love it. Here's your gamepad, right? And it's got, like, it's got, like, analog sticks, and it's got this uh, D-pad here, which is generally represented as a POV hat on a computer. And you've got buttons. You've got lots and lots of goddamn buttons. So what you can do is you can tell direct input, okay, I want to know, give me like four buttons and give me two, or give me four axes, which is like two um, analog sticks. And I'm fine with that. And it'll do that. It'll pick four basically random ones, or probably the first four, and it will give you information about them every time you ask for it. So what set data format does is it lets you specify the data format that it will report to you in future calls. <clears throat> now you can go through a whole bunch of bullshit and create a custom data format. However, I don't think people generally do this because I couldn't find any really good examples to do this online. I wanted to do that, but I couldn't. So what I did instead was I the uh, direct input defines uh, constant formats that you can just use right off the bat. You don't have to define them. And one of them is the direct input joystick 2 format. So let's just, just copy that. And we'll just put this right in here. And this one, this is all the stuff that will fit in this data reporting. So it supports, these are all axes, right? Uh, this is all axes. So it supports like a butt ton of axes. It supports f up to four POV hats, so up to four D pads basically. And it supports 128 buttons. More buttons than you'll ever need. Uh, so it's a bit of an it's a bit of overkill. And there's reasons why I don't like it, but the advantage is it's super easy. And because I tried the other way and it, I didn't get any progress with it, I said, fuck it, I'm just going to use the same thing that all the examples online use, and I used this, and it worked fine. <clears throat> so that's one thing. And you got to set a data format before you pull the device for its current state. I forget the name of the function, we'll get to it in a second. Now, you can get information from a gamepad in two ways. You can ask it at any time the state of any of its controls, any of its objects. Uh, that's one way. And the other way is you can get a uh, basically a list of events that happened on the on the uh, the gamepad. So in order to pull its state, you got to set data format. And in order to enable the uh, the events the event queue, basically, you have to set a property. You got to set the property of the buffer size for the events. So there are a lot of different properties you can set for devices and for controls on the devices. It's just a whole bunch of bullshit. I'm totally not going to cover like any of that because it's mostly just useless. But one of those is setting the buffer size. And this one is very important because if you don't set it, you're not going to get it. So this is what you do. You say you create a, uh, what is this, a direct input property D word. D word means that the actual payload of the, uh, the data that you're going to set to the property is a D word. And you set the header size, you set the size of, I don't even know what, okay, so, yeah, so this prop thing has a header and then it has data. And so first you gotta set the size of the header, 
and you got to set the size of the entire thing and I don't even know this is like DW how fuck I don't know how it finds the thing that you're looking for I have no idea and object what is all this bullshit I don't even know object set it to zero it's probably not even used for this property the important thing is the data. This is what you're actually setting for the property, and I'm setting that to 256, meaning buffer up to 256 events. And then you call set property for the device. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. It's not that complicated. This is all basically boilerplate code stuff that you don't really have to worry about. You just got to create it once and then forget about it. Forget about the nightmare that is direct input. All right, so after you call set data format, what I do is I enumerate all the objects in the, uh, in the device. It's the same idea as enumerating devices on the system. You give it a callback, you give it a context. This just tells, this is like a filter. You can tell it enumerate all objects or enumerate only buttons or I don't know. I have no idea all the options for this, but like enumerate only force feedback objects. Whatever. Just give me everything. Give me give me give me it all. And the callback here is enum objects callback. So let's go down there. Let's find that callback. So what am I what am I doing here? So for every object, uh, what I'm doing is I'm checking the type. And if it's an axis, what I'm doing is I'm setting a property for the axis. This is different than the DI prop uh, D word. This one's a range, so it has a different payload. It's got basically two values in here. And the values, the, this property, property range, gives you the range of this axis. So for example, if this was an analog stick, this might set the range of values reported by the X axis. So we want to set them all to like a standard value because we don't want different axes reporting different values and like then our program is going to respond to them differently and the input is going to get all fucked up. No, we don't want that. We want everything on the same standard. So we set the range from negative 1,000 to a positive 1,000 because that's a nice round number. I like it. The second thing we set is the dead zone because I found that some of my uh, controls on my controller it was reporting small numbers or fluctuations even when I wasn't touching the uh, the analog stick so what you want to do is you want to set a, a nice dead zone in the middle of the analog stick so that it's not going to report numbers even when it's centered so I like a nice dead zone of 100 right that's like 10% dead zone, but I don't know. Your, your mileage will vary. I don't know what you're going to want to do with this. I think 100 is a good value, and that's the one I set. And this is all I do for the objects. Now, back when I started this, my big idea was to enumerate all the objects. And when you enumerate objects, one of the things you can get from the objects, let me just show you quick here. So you go to PDIDOI pointer to, and you can get the name of the object or the name of the thing, the button, the axis, as reported by the driver of the controller. And this is big because normally when you play a game and you try to configure the controller, it gives you names like button one, button two, button three. However, if you're playing with like a PlayStation 3 controller, like, it tells you button zero. It's like, okay, I have no I have fucking idea what button that is. I know triangle. Can you speak triangle? And it's like, nah, button zero, dude. Figure it out. Now, if you could enumerate all the, um, the objects and then create a, uh, a custom... Where is it? Fuck, where did I put it? Create a custom uh, data format thing. What is it called? Yeah, data format. Create a custom data format suited particularly to that gamepad. And you could associate then all the, the actual names of the controls 
to the buttons, that would make life a lot easier for configuring and it would just be like a more elegant approach. You wouldn't have 128 buttons in your data format even though your, your gamepad obviously doesn't have 128 buttons. So that's what I wanted to do, but I couldn't get the motherfucker to work, and so I gave up, and I, I admitted defeat to my overlord direct input, and ever since then, life has been copacetic. But, I still have hope, maybe well, maybe one day I'll retry, I have some ideas, maybe I'll talk, talk about them a little later. Anyways, that is enumerating uh, objects in the gamepad. All right. So where are we at? Right, a num a num objects. Last thing you want to do is set the the cooperator level. That's just telling the thing. You know, I think you first of all you have to set this before you start using the controller. I may be wrong, but I think you have to. And when you do set it, uh, for example, you, do you want to still keep receiving input from the controller even if you lose focus of the screen? And the answer to that is, I think yes. So I say background, meaning still give me information if um, I if the focus of the window goes somewhere else. Because this isn't like a pain in the butt if you get like a pop-up and all of a sudden you're playing the game and the controller goes dead because the focus was switched. I hate that shit, and you should too. So make this background, and exclusive just means that other applications are not allowed to gain access to the controller as long as you have it, which I think is just a good policy to take. And this is why we have to pass each wind in. It's because set cooperative level needs a handle to the window, because it needs to know when things, you know, that information for handling the, uh, the focus of the window. So that is the main stuff about creating your gamepad. And, in terms of the uh, API, that's a lot of the boil boilerplate stuff out of the way. Now, the actual meat of getting information from your controller, your device, happens in the update function, which should be called every frame. Now, what this does is, first of all, it, qu it acquires the device. You have to acquire the device before you even try getting information. And to be honest, you can probably acquire it once in the constructor and then leave it, especially if you have a background and exclusive set. You're probably not going to lose the device, but I'm not sure. You might lose it. And I'm just to be safe, I just acquire it every time I call update. I don't think there's any sort of overhead involved, but anyways, that's what I do. Now, the second thing is polling the device. Some devices. Uh, the driver will automatically update, it automatically post events to the queue and it will update the state of the device. But other devices will not, and I'm not sure which ones require you to pull. <clears throat> I believe when you create the device, you can figure out whether it requires polling or not. That information is available. But my solution is just to pull the fuck out of everything. And in the off chance that the device that you're using does require polling, then you're set. If not, probably no damage done. Again, I doubt there's much overhead in either of these in the case where it's already acquired and it doesn't require polling, so just call them. Just call them and don't worry about it. And then the call here, get device state, is does exactly. It gets the state of every control in the device. And I just update this and I cache it in the... Um, in our gamepad wrapper object. So the gamepad wrapper down here has a DI joy state embedded in it and that is updated every time you call update. And I think that's a better solution. Like, there's two in interfaces in my wrapper. One interface is you can get the current state of any control. And the other interface is you can get uh, the events on the control as they happen in order. This is the same idea that we use for the keyboard or the mouse. And both are useful in different situations. So, but if you're using the interface where you're just interested in the current state of a control, uh, 
I don't know how much overhead is in get device state, but just to be safe, I cache that inf in information every frame. And then subsequent calls to get button data or get access data will be, you know, really fast. You won't have to repeatedly call get device state, which may or may not be efficient. Again, I haven't run the numbers on it, but I like this solution, so I stick with it. The next thing I do is I get a bunch of data out of the, uh, the queue of device data. So I create a buffer, uh, an array of D device object data. And I call get device data, which is different than get device state. This one gets a list of messages. And how it works is you pass it the size of the, the structure that it's going to fill, a pointer to the beginning of the, uh, the array of structures, and the number of items in the array of structures, which is the buffer to be filled, and zero. Which I don't know, but it's again, it's probably bullshit. You can look it up if you want. I don't know how important it is, but I set it to zero and it works, so... Now, we set n items, this is interesting, you send it as a pointer, not as just a value. And the reason is, is because when get device data finishes, it fills this n items with the amount of items actually copied into the buffer. So it's an input and an output. And then we use that in this loop here. And what we do is we check to see what kind of data it is. So if it is uh, button data, then what we want to do is add a button event into our queue. We have, again, I created a uh, an event class that wraps around these uh, event parameters. So where oh, I lost it? God damn it! Where's my up? Where's my update? There it is. All right. So it's the same thing uh, for. Oh, this is a this is a bug, by the way. This is the uh, the POV hat, which is the D pad, and it reports its data in degrees, so hund hundredths of a degree. So this is forty five hundredths of a or yeah hundredths of a degree, which is forty five degrees, ninety degrees again. So zero degrees is pointing straight up. So I translate that into floating point values and, you know, put them into the queue of events. And the same thing if it is LX or LY, RX or RY, and I also use LZ. So the way I do this in my gamepad is, basically the gamepad supports 128 buttons, it supports one D-pad, it supports two analog sticks, and it supports one extra axis. Which is probably, I think it's the triggers. So the right and left triggers on the, uh, on the gamepad. On my PlayStation 3 controller, anyways. So it's sort of hardwired that way. You, of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can implement your gamepad any way you want. But this is the way I've chosen to do it. So for gamepads... It's just state LX and LY, LRX and LRY, and convert those to floating points directly and put them on. Whereas for the uh, the POV hat, the D-pad, it's a little more complicated. And the buttons is just the D, the data, and this would be the very top bit of the first byte. And that signals whether the button is pressed or not pressed. Now, like I said, this should be POV hat. I changed that. I fixed this later on, but it should be the POV hat thing. All right. Now, one thing that might not make much sense and which probably should be explained is this offset of. What is that? If you're familiar with your uh, Visual Studio... Um, what is it called? Syntax highlighting. This is a macro, and it's a, it's a weird macro, but it can be useful. What it does 
is you pass it a uh, you pass it a structure, and then you pass it a member in that structure. The name of a member, just the, the naked name of the, the member. And what it returns is the offset in bytes of that uh, structure, or that member in the structure. And this is important because uh, device object data has a member DW offset, and that specifies the offset in your device state structure that you that you set the offset of the control that this event pertains to so in order to figure out what button or what access the event is for you have to look at this offset and figure out where that is in your structure which can be difficult uh, my microphone is swiveling away from my face which can be difficult <clears throat> to do, uh, but this offset thing makes it actually a lot easier. It's weird just using the naked like uh, member name as a parameter. You never do that in C, so it can be strange, but it works. Now, I just copy and pasted here with from here to here, and I forgot to change this one. So this one, or wait, I from here to here, and I forgot to change it. So this one should be the POV hat one. We'll, we'll cover that when I actually change it later on. So to figure out what button you've actually used, you have to subtract the offset of button 0 from the offset. And that'll give you the, uh, the actual button which was pressed. So here we check to see whether it is, the offset is between the first button, or the zeroth button, and the last button. Here we check to see whether the offset is for the POV hat, and here we check to see whether it is for uh, LX or LY, just some specific um, axes that I, I picked out from my controller. In general, for most controllers, this is going to be the left analog X and Y, the right analog X and Y. And for my controller, this one is the, uh, the trigger on the, on the right and the left. <clears throat> All right, so that is just about everything that you need to know about direct input in order to be up to speed with what I know. I mean, I did this like four months ago. I used to know more, but I forgot all that bullshit because it wasn't useful. Now, as for the stuff specific to the framework, or this, not the framework, but the, uh, the hugs project, there's the event class here. Don't worry about this, because uh, I don't use it that much. It just specifies whether uh, the stick is a uh, D-pad or analog 1 or analog 2. I think I use it like once or twice anyways. Anyways, uh, so the vent, there are four types. Button, axis, stick, or invalid. Now, axis, in this case, doesn't, like, for example, the, the X and Y axes on the uh, analog sticks don't count. This is a separate, just a single axis, like the trigger button, which is the only one I implement so far. Uh, so for the analog sticks axes, you just use stick, which is, in my gamepad, I, just two axes, X and Y, lumped together. Because I don't like accessing them uh, separately. It doesn't seem right to me. I like to access them as a single vector. And that's what I do. So you got different constructors. And what I do here is I, I overload the constructor and the signature of the overload determines whether or what kind of event it becomes. So if you pass it an index plus a vector, it becomes a stick type event. If you pass it just a value, a floating value, it becomes the single axis. And if you pass it an index and a bool, it becomes a button. And you can get axis, get index. There's asserts, so if you try to get the axis value from, say, a button, uh, the compiler is going to shit the bed. It's going to puke and say, what the fuck? Which is always a good thing. You should never be trying to get your axis values from a button. 
Uh, and I use some bullshit here, just a union to save a little space, although it's, you know, it's not a really a very important optimization. But, so it creates a union between position, which is only for uh, stick, value, which is only for access, and bool, which is only for buttons. So it doesn't, uh, instead of having all three and taking up space, even though only one is going to be in use, it uh, creates a union and shares the space among them. They occupy the same space. You get the idea. You've all seen unions before. And that's it. I mean, the uh, the direct input, it has a function to get the pad, and it get, returns a reference to the, the game pad, which is, there's only one pad. And if there is no pad, then the compute the thing will just crash. So don't try to run it without a pad or add a test. I mean, I'll, I'll obviously I'll add a test later. I was just being lazy, as usual. And that's about it for uh, the explanation of the direct input system. Two main classes, I split it up between direct input and gamepad with a helper class of event. And a lot of bullshit. Now, where is the bullshit that I wanted to talk about? I got a list here. Talked about that one. Talked about the POV hat. Well, one thing I should talk about here, which is might be a problem, is, and I've even, I've even remembered to write it in when I was writing this code, is, in general, POV hat will return a value equal to the, uh, the angle with respect to up. So, for a POV hat that corresponds to a D-pad, this is fine, but if your POV hat actually has more degrees of freedom, you're going to be fucked because any de- any values that aren't one of these default to zero. In general, the uh, the D-pad will report like for centered, no direction being pressed. It'll either report uh, f f f f like negative one, or it'll report no wait it's D word so it's either going to report negative one. Or it's going to report FFFF. And I'm not sure which of those it reports. It doesn't matter, because if it's not one of these, it's, it just defaults to centered. But if you wanted to make a better system where it converts the degrees exactly, so it can support more degrees of freedom, you're going to have to be aware that the centered value has... There's, specific, there's two specific values, and it depends on the driver. Most drivers use negative one, apparently, but some will use FFFF, 65, 5, 36, 35. Yeah. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, like I said, you probably don't need to use pull. I do it just in case. And yeah, you right now it's set to only enumerate a single device. We'll fix that later. Uh, there's another problem here. In update, Let's see if you can spot it. Where's update? God damn it! I can never find the functions. When there it is. All right. So here at the end, we call if events greater than size events is just the uh, the container that holds our queue of events and if that is greater than max events which is just our arbitrary uh, maximum on the amount of events that we queue we're going to pop event off the uh, the stack so that it becomes less than size but or the size is less than max events but the problem is is that if size is more than 2 or two or more greater than max events, we're only going to pop one off and then leave. So this doesn't really work. You should change this to while. But, yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, there's there's not going to be very many uh, times where it's going to ex- the, the amount of events is going to exceed the uh, limit on our buffer. And even if it does, it's not a big deal. But this should be while. 
All right. Two more things I want to talk about. One I already sort of talked about, and that's just the enum objects callback thing. So my idea was to enumerate all the objects that actually exist on the device and then to create a custom data format such that, A, we only uh, include the buttons that exist or the axes that exist. There's no wasted space. And only the ones that we want from among those. And B, we will now know the actual names for all of the objects on there. Uh, which is nice. Like, for example, for my gamepad, if I uh, enumerate the objects and I ask for the names of the buttons, it'll tell me, like, triangle, square, circle. It depends on the driver, the man driver manufacturer, but I think most driver manufacturers will put a, the name in there that corresponds to the name on the actual controller. Now... Uh, what is this here? Set data format. So, you need a pointer to uh, DI data format. So let's look at that for a second here. DI data format. What do we get? Take forever kind of bullshit. DI data format, uh, it's got size and objects. So basically this structure is going to hold a pointer to an array of data format objects. Uh, so this one is like a header basically. And it's an array of DI object data format structures. So this is where all the, the meat of the uh, object data format is going to go into. And this one is the data for each object. And it's got a few things. It's, uh, it's got a type member thing here. And this specify that describes the object. And it's weird because it's like it's got you have a macro and you you create the type based on the object type plus an instance portion which is somehow put into the middle 16 bits and created by using make instance. It's weird, but Basically, using this should allow you to get a specific instance of the device, but the, the number you use to get the instance isn't clear. It's not very clear. And you would think that you can get a specific instance by using GUID, because it's a unique identifier. But apparently, the unique identifier might not work, because that's what I used. Basically, I took the unique identifier that you get when you enum the objects, and I plugged it into here. But I also used this DW type thing, and it just it never gave me what I wanted. And offset is the offset into the data structure that's going to be reported. So it can be it's it's a bitch to, to figure this out because you've basically got to manually set all the number offsets for everything. And if you're doing this dynamically, you can fuck it up pretty easy. Uh, but yeah, so offset into the reported data type of the object and GUID, which I don't really know what that's for. And some flags to specify that data format must report some stuff. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know any bullshit. One thing that makes me think that I might... See, normally how this is used is you request a data format, but you don't actually specify what buttons are going to be mapped to that part of the data format. That's done automatically. All you do is you specify, okay, for this object, I want any axis. And so you specify axis, any instance. And you specify the offset into the data structure, but everything else is set to zero. 
you can also specify I want any X axis and that's where the GUID seems to come in is for using these constants. This is a constant that's defined by direct input and you use this to specify I want an X axis. Give me any instance but also it has to be X axis. So when I think so what I think is, if you want a specific button, here is for button 0, you don't specify the GUID. You set that to 0. And you, you OR button with make instance 0. And that will give you button 0. So what I'm thinking is, when you enumerate the objects, you don't look at the GUID that you get in the enumerator. You forget about the GUID. It's bullshit. All you look at is the count of, like, the index of this, uh, for example, button uh, in the context of how many buttons you've already enumerated. So if this is the first button you've seen, then this would be instance zero. And then when you want to later on create your custom format and you want to map that uh, button that you found in your enumeration, you use instance zero, and you can create a uh, association in your code between the name that you found in the enumeration and the uh, the value that you create in your custom data format. It's uh, if it sounds complicated, then I have good news for you. You don't have to worry about any of that bullshit because. Uh, using this works just fine. So while it's not optimal, it is the way that most people use from my experience of just looking up bullshit online, trying to get the, uh, the custom data format working. Definitely a dearth of information about that bullshit. So I said fuck it and fuck you Microsoft. Now the other thing I said fuck it really quick to was action mapping. Apparently, and I found like zero information about this online, so nobody has ever used this. The guy who coded this feature into direct input wasted his life. But there is something called action mapping, and what it does is it allows you to map your uh, objects on your on your controller to actions and somehow that will allow you to better create customizable controls for your game apparently and also direct input has like a whole separate like dialogue system and it stores the files somewhere for games that use action mapping I don't know how it works I'm just gonna put it all right out there I have no fucking idea I never even tried with action mapping trying to create custom data format was as far as I went and that was a terrible that was a horrible mistake um, so I don't know how it works I have no idea how action mapping works and I don't care I'm, I was just trying to think of like maybe looking it up uh, set action map direct input Yeah, that's a method. <clears throat> um, let's see here. DI action format. For save, always save the configuration to disk. So you see direct input actually manages these action maps on the disk. And I believe it also has like a custom, like a really bland looking custom dialog box that comes up and lets you set the action mapping for a game. But I've never seen that function for any game I've ever played, and I've never seen any code which uses this bullshit. So I have absolutely no idea how it works. And I'm not going to try to implement it going only by the, uh, the documentation online. Because it's utter bullshit. And if you look online, and you don't see a lot of information on action mapping I don't think I don't know I didn't try to look that hard but uh, I, I didn't see much about it when I was looking for other shit so 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say that action mapping is a waste of time. And I'm not going to look at it. But that is direct input bullshit in a nutshell. Now, the problem is, it's kind of, uh, this is kind of a, I don't know, half-assed place to end this lesson because I don't actually have anything to show you guys. Or, if you guys download this code yourself, you don't really have anything to show for it. You can try to implement this uh, gamepad yourself in the game before I do in the next uh, tutorial, but I'd like to show off at least that the, 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 uh, the gamepad works here. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a very stupid, simple test. I'm going to go inc include D input. Got these nasty cup noodle burps. I had myself a cup of uh, chili tomato noodle today. It's been a while. It's still delicious as ever. It's where I get my namesake from. Uh, wh what am I going to call it? I guess I got to go into here. I used to eat, like, seriously, like, over 10 cups of chili tomato noodle a week. My body, at one time, was probably over 50% composed of chili tomato noodle. And that is why I have taken it as my name. Okay, so if I want to do this, obviously I want to include... Include direct dinput.h. That'll make this much better, hopefully. Okay, I made it direct input. Fine, whatever. DI. There we go. Now we toggle the header file. We go DI HWND. And what we're going to do is we're going to go GFX not draw. Fuck that. What we're going to do is we're going to add. Toggle header file, code file, we're going to add an int n is equal to zero, n is equal to negative one and we're going to go back here and in the update model we're going to go if di dot oh fuck, we need to get pad alright, if di no. Auto pad is equal to di dot get pad. There we go. Now, if pad dot is empty, not. It is a very nice pad, not. It is not a very nice pad. Whatever. Here we go. Uh, so if the pad is not empty, then uh, auto event is equal to pad dot get. It's not get. Read event. It's really like I don't know. Like ma make those match. Some places it's read. Some places it's get. It's fucking pissing me off. All right. So we do that, and then we go if e dot. Uh, get type is equal to e dot button and e dot is pressed n is equal to e dot get index so this will get the index of any button we press and remember it and then here we'll go p screen Pointer to no fuck that. We'll go gfx dot draw string and the string is gonna be std two w string. Don't you just miss all my typing since I've started using uh, git and source control? Uh, don't you just miss it all? Vec two. I don't. 
0.0F, 0.0F, put that in the top left corner of the screen. Ah, I need a font. Well, fuck me. You know what? I'm just going to make a font right here. This is very inefficient. Creating a new... Ah, fuck it. Mm, I can't let myself do it. The premature optimizer in me is just like, no, that's too inefficient. Make a font. Make a new font. Make it. Make it once and then never make it again. Alright, fonts. What do we need for font? Uh, Ariel? Ariel? Yeah. Well, I can't remember which one's the mermaid. I'm gonna make this one uh, 20F. And bold is equal to true. We're bold and we're beautiful, baby. Alright. I was more of a days of our lives man anyways. Font. Color is white. Uh... Now, I don't need to configure my controller. Now, if I run this, we got negative one in the top left corner. Now, if I press buttons on my controller, that number should change. It's not changing. I know why it's not changing, but, you know, can you guess why it's not changing? If you can, then maybe you were paying attention. If you can't, then Jesus, may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, let's do this. Pad.update. Obviously, the information in our wrapper is only updated when we call update. There are ways, by the way, uh, where you can have the gamepad call a callback function whenever an event happens. And that seems complicated, but I guess it might be okay for some situations. If you're really worried about the overhead of calling an update function every frame. Alright, so let's press some buttons. Zero, one, two, three, right trigger, left, L, R1, L1, R2, L2, start button, select button, uh, the right analog stick button, the left analog stick button, D-pad doesn't do anything, analog sticks don't do anything because they're not buttons and I'm only listening to buttons. The PlayStation button in the middle is 12, apparently. That is all the buttons. So, that's how that works. It works fine. There's a bug in there somewhere with the, uh, the POV hat. It'll be fixed later. Next episode, we are going to work the gamepad into the actual game. So we're going to work... And we're going to have... Con we're going to revamp the input system quite a bit in order to accommodate multiple kinds of input and in order to set the stage later on for being able to configure your input. But that's that's today's lesson and I'm Chili reminding you to come play magic with Chili because Chili needs people to enable his bad habit of playing magical cards and wasting his life. That is all.